All right, guys. Hey, how you doing? Uh, today we are here in our F-18 Hornet. We're going to be doing the ECM tutorial. Uh, the way I'm going to do this one is I'll show you how to turn the ECM on and its different functionalities in the Hornet. Uh, and then we will, if you're interested, you can stick around for the end of the video where we will talk about um, the functionality of the ECM and how it works. As far as I know because obviously a lot of those aspects are still classified. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit about what is available to the public in terms of uh, how the ECM works. Uh, and the other thing that I want to note is that the ECM isn't totally integrated in the F-18, but I can still show you mostly how it works and how it will work when it is implemented. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we're going to have a look at is down here, the ECM knob, which is located to the right of the dispenser switch. If you remember from the countermeasures tutorial, we have the ECM. Now you have five different modes that you can put it into, right? And every mode that you put it into, these lights turn on here and here. However, Due to the fact that it's early access, some of these lights, or mostly all of these lights, don't actually turn on yet. But I'll, I'll show you at the end uh, what they would look like anyway. So let's start uh, let's start going through some of the functionalities of this ECM. Uh, in the off position, it obviously does nothing. It's off. Uh, in the standby position, you're warming up the ECM. That requires about four minutes in order to warm up. Uh, the ECM will turn on the standby lights and obviously like I said we'll talk about the lights at the end so you put it into standby uh, it takes four minutes to warm up and once it's done that uh, the standby light will turn off and you can go into a bit test okay so the bit test the Hornet will run a test on the ECM and make sure that everything is working well at which point you will go you will get a go or no go light based on how that test went and then you can switch it into one of two functionalities of the ECM uh, you can go into receive and transmit so in the receive section uh, the ECM will detect incoming threats and it will display them to you again with the lights at the top which we'll talk about after uh, it'll detect threats but it won't take any action against them as long as it's in the receive uh, knob like section here uh, once you put it into the exmit or transmit um, functionality, the ECM will detect incoming threats and it will take the appropriate action to jam them or uh, block them in whatever way the ECM deems acceptable. Uh, the other thing to note here is that the Hornet will do this automatically. In some of the older jets, you actually had to turn it on based on the threat. You had to turn it on at a certain time and all this other stuff. You have to worry about that in the Hornet. Uh, she does it for you. It's all automatic. Uh, all you have to do is make sure that you had it in standby. You did the warm-up. You did the bit test. And then you put her into transmit, and she'll just take care of the rest. All right? So let's go have a look at those lights that I was talking about. All right, so here we are looking at the lights. Uh, like I said, I had to. I have to do this in like a picture format. I can't just show you in the Hornet itself because the lights don't seem to work right now. They're not connected to the ECM due to the early access. Uh, but once they are, this is what'll happen. Once you put the ECM in the standby position, this green light will turn on, and that will indicate that the ECM is in standby mode. And the other thing I want to note is that these are all on because I put the test light on in order to take this picture. They won't all be on when you do this. Only the standby light will come on. All right. And once you put it into uh, the standby and it does the four minutes and this light will turn off, indicating that the ECM is ready to go. Next, you have the go and no go lights that is uh, dependent on the bit test. Uh, how that bid test went, if everything went well, you get the go light. If there was a problem, you get a no-go light. All right, which basically I'm assuming means that your ECM is out of commission. All right, so that's your uh, that's your no your go and no-go lights. 
and then you have your receive and transmit functionality lights if you put it in the receive position this light will turn on if you turn it on the if you put the knob on the transmit position this light will turn on and that will just tell you what mode your ECM is on in a heads up display manner without you having to look down past your stick every time okay and these lights are located above the uh, left DDI okay and finally we have the threat detection lights so once you have the ECM set on either the receive or the transmit mode uh, it will show you these four lights that will indicate what kind of threat the ECM is detecting. Uh, AI is uh, air intercept, so if it detects a plane or another jet within uh, lethal range, the ECM will turn on and it will show you this light here, AI. Um, the CW, this is continuous wave radar, so in this, uh, when this light is indicated, it means that there's a ground radar that is guiding a missile, uh, possibly coming at you. And if it's not guiding a missile, a missile will be coming very shortly. All right. Uh, SAM is obviously surface-to-air missile, and the AAA. This is a AAA guided radar. Uh, if you don't know what AAA is, it's obviously just a it's a big tank with a bunch of big machine guns, and it has a radar on it that calculates a fire solution on you. And if the ECM detects that radar, it will display the AAA threat detector light. Okay. So that pretty much sums up the lights, guys. And like I said, these lights aren't currently connected to the ECM, but they will be eventually. And once they are, this is what you'll see. All right. So that basically sums this up. If you're still interested in sticking around to see the uh, technical aspects of how the ECM works, then by all means, stick around. We'll talk about that in the next section. All right, guys, welcome to the... Uh, technical aspect of how the electronic countermeasures work inside the F-18 Hornet. Uh, the system inside the F-18 Hornet is called the ANALQ-124 Integrated Defensive Countermeasure System, or IDECM. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. The DECM, as we talked about, is Defensive Electronic Countermeasures. Okay. Uh, the Hornet has is an I has the I here integrated DECM, and basically it integrates a bunch of these defensive electronic countermeasure systems into one system that the Hornet executes automatically. Okay, so let's talk about what kind of stuff uh, an electronic countermeasure can and does do. All right, so what does an electronic countermeasure do? Uh, an electronic countermeasure provides false positives to enemy radar systems. Uh, this is called multiple target repeater system or repetition, multiple target repetition. Uh, it creates false positives so the target or the operator of the radar doesn't know what target to lock onto. Okay. The next thing it does is it cuts communication between the interceptor and the uh, basically radar ground communication uh, guidance that he or she is receiving from the ground. Uh, this is not really a major functionality in today's world. It was back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s where MiG-21s and some of the other MiGs uh, required a little bit of assistance from ground radar and uh, controlled in order to be vectored onto their targets. So it messed around with their communication abilities. Um, Today's fighters aren't really like that. They have all that integrated ground radar stuff right in their own plane. The capabilities of the radar are much stronger. So if you cut the communication between the jet and the ground, uh, it doesn't really affect the ability of the jet to uh, execute its target or to intercept you. So this is not really a major function of the ECM anymore. Uh, I'm sure it's still capable of it just in case, but I don't think it really uses it that much. Uh, the other functionality of the ECM is to break locks that have been acquired on you, and it does that through a very complicated gate system. Uh, I really don't want to get into it in this video, just because you know we'd be here for three hours. But just know that once a radar guides you up, or sorry, locks you up, it basically puts you into this uh, tunnel lock via the radar, and just know that the ECM breaks that lock. That's really all you need to know about that. All right, we won't get too complicated into this. Okay, and then the 
next function is the uh, providing false information about your position. Once that thing has you locked up, once that radar has you locked up, uh, the ECM can either break a lock on you or it can provide false information about your position to the radar. Now, how it does this, I don't know, and I would imagine that this information is highly classified, um, but it can basically lie to the radar about your altitude or uh, your position, your speed, so that if a missile is launched, it's sent in the wrong direction, essentially. Not direction, but like it's not very accurate. It's locked onto the wrong position in the sky, somewhere where you are not. Okay, so that's how that ECM works. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, multiple target repetition and how the ECM fools a radar into thinking that there's multiple targets. Okay, so in order to do that, we have to have a pretty basic understanding of how radar works in the first place. So I've illustrated it in this manner. Uh, let's say you are obviously the plane up here. This is the enemy radar. Um, pretend that there's like missiles here too. And this is the radar screen of this uh, radar system. Okay. These blue, big, thick ones, these ones are the radar waves coming out of the dish. And what happens is once they hit your plane, uh, a small surface area of this wave hits your plane and is reflected back. Okay. This reflects back to the radar dish, and the radar dish then knows that you're there. And that makes it. A little blip on the radar here so once that happens you get this little blip on the radar and the radar because of this bounce back can tell that hey there's a guy there okay so the way that the ECM system works uh, it tricks this beam into thinking that there's another plane so the way it does that is it's in the tail of the plane here and what it does is it reads the frequency and all the information that comes with this radar wave when it hits your plane, the ECM reads that and repeats it back to the radar. So along with this beam that is the original and correct beam of your plane ba bouncing back to that radar, the ECM will send another one of these back to the radar. So what that will look like is like this. So you see these red ones? These are the ECM repeated waves, okay, and it comes with a slight delay and it sends this back so the radar starts to think that um, there's a second plane and because there's a delay it thinks that there's distance between these two planes and it starts to look like this on the radar screen so you get two blips okay so now the radar thinks there's two of you out there because your ECM keeps repeating back bounces right now imagine if your ECM does that a whole bunch of times this is an example of it doing once Imagine if it does it a whole bunch of times, okay? It'll start to look something like this. See that radar there? Now the radar is very confused. He thinks there's like 100 targets out there, okay? Um, and the one thing to note here is that even though you're creating a bunch of uh, blips here, you're still basically telling the radar your general direction that you're coming in from, right? So this is why the transmitter in the old like ECM systems the 50s and 60s the pilot manually had to turn it on and he had to do it at a certain distance close enough to the radar that he wouldn't create a pattern like this because the the uh, radar could then still come to about a 10 degree match on where his bearing was and where he was coming from so if he really wanted to jam this radar really well he'd have to wait till he was a little closer and if he was closer the pattern he would create on the radar is something like this See this? So once he was closer, his radar would be, uh, sorry, the, the enemy radar would look something like this. And this becomes very difficult to pick which one of these blips is the real blip, right? The ECM is creating all kinds of problems for an enemy lock-on, all right? All right, so that is how the ECM affects uh, ground surface radars and things of that nature. The ground radar can also be used against uh, air targets, so other jets that are trying to jam you up or lock you up, and that would look something like this. Okay, so this is how it would look on an enemy radar that you were jamming. If you were jamming him, this is what he would see on his radar screen. It's not exactly like this. I drew these boxes on just for simplic simplicity's sake. But uh, this is essentially what it would look like. It's these green bars that appear on the radar in the form of almost a ladder. 
And the way he would defeat the ECM is eventually he would have to get close enough to do what's called burning through an ECM. So if he can burn through your ECM, that means he's basically getting close enough that his radar is now able to distinguish between what is true information and what is garbage. And his radar will filter out the garbage and will display to him the true target, which is still you. Okay? So if you're jamming a target, expect him to try to close on you very quickly. He's going to try to burn through your ECM. All right, guys, so that is the ANALQ124 IDECM tutorial for the ECM of the F-18 Hornet. Okay, I hope you learned something. Uh, like I said, I didn't want to get too complicated into it because it would have been a three-hour video. Um, so I, I tried to keep it fairly basic. I hope it was helpful to you. As always, thanks for the support, guys. Really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.